Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Another full career episode. Something I've done before in much more detail. I'm gonna try and keep this, you know what I'm like, but I'm gonna try and keep this a little snapshot video just, just to put minds at rest. A lot of people worry about this topic. The topic is molting our hawks out and hawks to mean any falconry bird, not just uh, the accipiters. So your hawks, your falcons, your broadwings, your houses, whatever, molting our birds. I'm just gonna go over a few things that crop up time and again, uh, social media, people asking me directly. It's not an illness, it's just part of their life cycle throughout the year, certainly of our temperate climate birds that tend to molt in the wild through the late spring and summer months. But let's cover it now. So why do they molt during the summer, our falconry birds? Most of them molt in the summer because it's natural for them. A temperate bird that, that's, that breeds in spring in, a, in the northern hemisphere, if you like, away from the tropics, I suppose the southern hemisphere away from the tropics is the same, but it's the other way up. What we've got here are birds that are naturally going to have more food once late spring kicks in and summer. There's more of an abundance of food. That means it's easier to get calories. That means it's easier to put weight on. That means you've got more calories, more energy for your body to start putting all that work and energy into growing a new set of clothes, a new set of feathers. And typically breeding birds, the female gets a, quite a window of time where she's looking after eggs, she's looking after the young when they're newly hatched, and the male's doing all the work for her. What a great time, she's getting well fed, she's not spending out a lot of energy, and she's not flying or needing to fly much. So a great time for her to really start shedding those feathers. Why do falconers molt their birds in the actual summer? Well, unless you're doing pest control or displays, the falconry season proper ends, for me, the end of February, beginning of March. Some people will fly on through March, but to me, even though our seasons aren't strict anymore in Britain, March onwards, that's the breeding season or the beginning of the breeding season for very much of our quarry. Much of it actually just produce some babies and, and young in the winter because our winters are mild. But generally, March is the end of the falconry season. We don't want to be hunting baby animals. There's no sporting flights in that. And also, as the leaves progress onto the trees, it's, it's actually more difficult and awkward flying falconry birds when all the trees and the woodlands are full of leaf as well. But realistically, we stop flying our birds in the spring. That's a really good time to fatten them up and start them molting. So what does start the molt? Because so many people panic that Fred's birds down the road, his birds already dropping tail feathers, mine's not even dropped a single downy feather. Do not worry about the molt. This is all this video is about. Do not worry zilch about the molt. Your bird will be triggered to molt and it will molt. Things will make it trigger, things will make it molt better. What's going to trigger the molt? Well, warming weather and daylight length. As the days increase in the spring, that's a psychological trigger for those birds to start molting and to start breeding for many animals. But the key thing is for our falconry birds, which will start the molt, working birds that we work with that will work all through the summer, into the autumn and then they'll get a rest in the winter the key trigger for their molting is actually an increase in weight fattening those birds up they don't have to be gorged absolutely so they can put on every ounce possible but fattening those birds up significantly will trigger birds to molt even some of our birds in the depths of winter because that's when they get their rest that's when they really get fattened up the molt isn't just triggered by the spring day length fatten your birds up well and they'll molt do they have to have a high quality diet to trigger the malt? Not even at all. Much more calories and stacking some weight on. Whatever the food, day old cockerels alone, will trigger a malt just fine. Do you want to give them good quality food for the malt? Of course you do. They're growing feathers. And just for their health, they're not going to get all they need from day old cockerels. Give them a good quality mixed diet and I can guarantee you, your birds will live a massively long, healthy life and will need no supplements of any kind. But if you don't give them a good quality mixed diet, yeah, you're the guys that maybe want to be looking at supplement feeding those birds for sure. So why as falconers can't we fly our birds when they're molting? Why do we have to wait until every last feather of the tail or the train has grown down in the autumn and then we can go hunting? Well, the, the simple answer to that is we don't have to wait for that. Display falconers, pest controllers, we're flying our birds all the way through the molt. Many of our birds, they'll molt slower, but they'll be molting those big tail feathers, their train feathers, their primary feathers, and we'll still be flying them. So why traditionally do we say, ooh, we can't start flying that bird 
until all of its feathers are fully grown down. Even if it's gone past the start of the September kickoff for falconry season, and now we're getting into October, why why shouldn't we fly them? It's this simple. Birds in the wild fly and hunt pretty much throughout their molt. Those male raptors, they don't get a rest when they're breeding. They're feeding young and the female at some point. They we rest our birds because as falconers, we ask our birds to operate at the very top of their prey range. We ask most of our birds to catch the biggest quarry that ever likely catch in the wild. And in the wild, most of our birds will not be regularly taking game of the size we expect and ask them to do. A male goshawk as a falconry bird will be expected to catch rabbits all day long and probably up to the size of a cock pheasant. It's not doing that in the wild. Yes, it might take a fully grown rabbit sometimes. Yes, it will sometimes take a cock pheasant. That male goshawk actually eats an awful lot of much smaller birds. And the problem with a molt is simple. If your bird's got a big tail feather growing down in the, in the blue, in, in the blood, if that feather gets snapped, not only is it going to bleed, it's not going to have that feather. It's going to have a manky stub that's going to last it possibly the whole year if it just snaps in the blood, just going to have a rotty looking stump there and it's going to bleed like mad when it snaps it. Bird will be fine, don't worry, but it's going to break it because at the end of the day, if your bird's getting, your male goshawk's taking fully grown rabbits, it's going to get kicked about highly likely and that's the quarry that's very likely, I've had it happen, I've had it happen, is going to kick and break those, those growing, those young growing feathers still in the blood. In the wild, catching smaller stuff, that will never happen. So as falconers, we like to wait until all our birds' feathers are, are fully down and fully hard penned before we can hunt. But if it's your first molt, you might have been spoiled last year. You might have took up that young hawk at the end of July. You might have had it trained and well ready and, and ready to enter at the beginning of September, the falconry season kickoff, if you like. Yeah, that's not likely to happen this year. And that's where the frustration sets in. It'll probably take that bird, probably, until October time, before it's fully hard penned. Suits me fine. I'm not ready to hunt till October. It's still boiling hot. There's nothing There's nothing dead. The nettles, there's no frost or anything in England now by October. But traditionally, you're now a month behind. If you want to go and fly grouse upon the on the moors um, of Scotland, maybe with your peregrine, it's even more frustrating because technically you want to be on those birds on the wing probably a month earlier than that still. Frustrating. That early bird that you've pulled or, or taken up from the breeding aver in July that was fully grown and fully hard penned next year through the molt is going to take longer. Is it worth using hormones to get those birds molting quicker and faster? Some people do. Don't do it. Let the bird naturally molt. Just let it naturally molt. Give it plenty of good quality food. Let it molt. The bird will molt by most of us want to go hunting. Let it molt. It's going to be okay. It doesn't need hormones to force it into molting faster and sooner. Not at all. Should your bird molt tethered? I've molted loads of birds tethered. I think now free lofting really is, is probably better for most birds unless you're really going to keep on top of them. Uh, as a business, I was always on top of them. I was always they got the sunshine, they were moved around, so on and so forth. If your bird's just going to get abandoned on a perch, then absolutely free loft it. But there's another reason to free loft that bird. A free lofted bird, shielded from stress and, and lots of going on around it. A f oh, there's a tool now. A fully enclosed aviary or an aviary with a small barred window and a skylight roof so it can see stuff going on without all the sundry going on right around it. I can guarantee you now, a bird free lofted in a nice peaceful aviary is going to molt faster and much more exclusively all over than, than almost any bird that's molted tethered and handled at least twice a day in and out. Almost exclusively. If you talk the more nervous birds, a first year goshawk that's molted in a full seclusion pen will likely molt completely, a male we're talking, because they tend to not molt as fast or as well as the females. A first year male goshawk especially, molted on a high ring perch, is more than likely to achieve about a 50% molt. For no other reason, nothing to do with weight, for no other reason than that relaxed bird, it, well, that bird in that seclusion aviary is just that more relaxed because a goshawk is a much more highly strung bird than many others. But even a Harris's hawk, almost definitely will molt better, 
more fully and faster if it's put in a seclusion or at least a semi seclusion aviary, a peaceful aviary where it doesn't need to be picked up and handled every day. I know it's super social, believe me, it will molt better in a nice aviary than tethered throughout the molt. Uh, and it will be a little bit fitter because it is going to move around more, a little bit more in an aviary than on a block or a ring perch, whatever. So let's just sum up. Your bird's going to molt better in an aviary than, than tethered. Your bird needs to be well fed. It doesn't have to be gorged so it's going to explode with fat, but well fed and its its flying weight significantly increased from its flying weight up to a, up to a fat weight. Feed it good quality food. You won't need any supplements. You don't need to feed any hormones to speed up the molt. The bird will molt. Forget what other people's birds are doing. The bird will molt if well fed. Give it good quality food. It's good health, but it's obviously going to help the malt as well. That's all you need to know. And if you really feel it's not fully malted and you want to go out hunting, that's perfectly fine. Wild birds do that. But be aware, if you're hunting reasonable size game, there's a good risk or certainly the potential risk of it breaking a feather that's still in the blood, which you really don't want to happen. Can you fly your birds all the way through the malt? Absolutely you can. All of us that do pest control and flying displays, we some of us, some of my birds fly every day of the year, almost. Um, Nigel, my Harris Hawk, he never gets a rest period, but he's never got the lovely bloom of a freshly malted Harris Hawk just taken up from the malting chamber, that's for sure. Subscribe, you know it makes sense. You know it's going to help the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.